to start. Uh, my first question was about last night when uh, President Trump announced that they had a partial deal with, with China. And uh, what was your reaction to it? Did you think it means anything? Is it good to have a little push on the brakes? Well, uh, I think it means something, but uh, not much. Because uh, we had this kind of uh, example already two or three times. Uh, right after the G20 meeting in Argentina, we have a truce uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. And then they met again in uh, early March, and uh, they talk about some something, and then uh, they go into the another truce. And in May, same thing. Right. So this time, they're just delaying the extra uh, imposition of tariff uh, uh, after Christmas, whatever. Yeah. So it means something, but uh, we don't have any visible agreement yet. Right. That's my observation. It's a lot of stop and go, as you said. What was your reaction to it, Carl? Yeah, I, I like the fact that um, <clears throat> the parties are talking and uh, that there seems to be uh, some convergence, but I share the view of my neighbor. Um, it, um, it is a little bit of a relief for a very short time, mm -hmm. but if the big goal of the US, of the president, is to um, shrink the deficit that they have with China, a lot more is necessary. Nice and I that. think a lot more inside the US is necessary. Gabriel? Yeah, uh, so I think economically this is uh, pretty much insignificant uh, because the, the uh, tariffs that have already been put in place don't go away. It's just that a further escalation uh, mm -hmm. is avoided. Uh, and, and some of the things that are promised now happen anyway. So uh, imports of uh, pork meat, for example, into China are going up very strongly already, also mm -hmm. from the United States, because they had to slaughter uh, large uh, shares of the, the pig population because of, uh, because of an epidemic. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, uh, the US president is not uh, very eager to uh, to, to have tariffs uh, on, on Christmas presents. Uh, so I think <laughs> you know, the sure. pork story and the yes. Christmas story, uh, and, and then we yeah. have this sort of small yeah. deal, but uh, it, yeah. it does nothing. Also uncertainty, the big yeah. issue we discussed this morning is, is not going away. One could even say that this type of negotiation actually exacerbates uncertainty because it shows the back and forth and how transactional this, this all is mm -hmm. and how much showbiz is yeah. around. So, it's um, very much like Trump, you know, transaction, showbiz. I mean, we're yeah, very much yeah, uh, yeah. into it. Yeah. What about you, Marcus? Transactions and showbiz. Yeah, I, I think these will be our um, uh, running themes for the next hour. Um, one hopes that this is a first step towards something greater, mm -hmm. uh, but I am skeptical. Donald Trump is an avowed protectionist. He makes no bones about it. And the people who surround him uh, do not suppose, support a liberal, rules-based international order. They are not friends of the WTO. They want to see trade organized through bilateral managed trade deals. If they resemble anything, it's the European governments of the 1930s. <laughs> and uh, Donald Trump, as you mentioned, launched a series of trade wars. Um, it is important to understand how big this is in the U.S. context. If you simply calculate the, the implied, uh, implied applied tariff rates on either imports from China or imports from the world as a whole, Donald Trump has basically moved the United States from the neighborhood of, of uh, the EU or Japan with applied rates of less than 2% to the neighborhood of Brazil and India. We're going to be another you know, big emerging market with populist political leadership. Mm. Um, the uh, implied applied rates on China would be more than 25%. I mean, it's huge numbers. So if you look at the specific deal last night, first of all, there's no deal. Yeah. There's not even, a, there's no text. There's not even a joint statement. The, the Trump, the <laughs> Trump uh, administration made assertions that have not been repeated in China. Yeah. So we don't know what that's about. There is a postponement of tariffs. The tariffs were supposed to go from 25 to 30 percent. That's been postponed, but it's not been taken off the table. And the core issues that supposedly were the justification for the trade war in the first place, uh, intellectual property rights, forced technology transfer, and so on, are not talked about. Yeah. So um, one hopes this is the seed of something that becomes much greater. Um, but uh, it, it doesn't look like much. One last thing about showbiz. 
Um, this also has to be understood in the context of the uh, impeachment effort underway in the United States right now. Trump's support among the farmers is eroding. Uh, he has been hurt badly by the Chinese retaliation on soybeans, as well as uh, not only on pork from China, but the fact that he pulled the United States out of TPP. So the United States producers faced big trade diversion problems in the Japanese market on pork. Mm -hmm. So one, you know, a, an audience like this needs to expect over the next year or so, not just in the trade area, but foreign policy area, that as the impeachment process ramps up, President Trump is going to be increasingly desperate to change the conversation in the United States and have some sort of positive or some sort of victory he can point to. And so he's going to take something like this, which appears to be nothing, and turn it into, you know, we're, we're making progress with China. And the rest of the country is here as well. Expect comments on trade and other foreign policy issues that may bear no resemblance to reality that are dri being driven by domestic political messaging. Okay, so I guess we all agree that last night we have a French expression for that. It's called la poudre aux yeux. I don't know how you say it in English, but it's very, uh, it sounds well in French. It's just uh, for the show.